Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss and talk about Cookery 10, Cook, Fish, and Shellfish with the subject code TLE underscore H-E-C-K-1-0-E-C-L-L-G-I-1-6. Are you ready to learn? I hope that you are because this is an interesting topic that you can use in your daily life and in your future. Get your aprons ready. Let's get started. Our objectives for today's lesson are the following. First, identify the principles of cooking fish and seafood dishes. Second, clean, cut, and fillet fish. And lastly, value the importance of using the correct cooking method for fish and shellfish. The delicate nature of fish and seafood requires extra care and attention during the cooking process. The same techniques used for cooking meats and poultry can be applied to fish and seafood, but cooking temperatures and times are generally reduced. The taste difference between freshwater fish and saltwater fish is most important for many people. Saltwater fish tend to have a fuller flavor, but also have a salty or briny taste. In contrast, freshwater fish do not have briny flavor and tend to have a milder flavor profile. The strong odor often associated with fish is found in the finned ocean varieties and to a lesser extent in mollusk and crustaceans. Saltwater fish possess molecules called trimethylamine and oxide or TMAO on their skin to help them balance the salt and water in their bodies. When the fish dies, enzymes go to work breaking down the trimethylamine and oxide to the odorous molecule trimethylamine TMA. Removing the skin, rinsing the fish before use, and keeping the fish iced are also ways to counteract the smell. Remember, heat transforms the flavor of fish and the longer it is cooked, the stronger the taste. Unlike meats that require several days to soften, after the effects of rigor mortis set in or the stiffening of the flesh, fresh killed fish require a matter of hours to soften their texture. And unlike meats, fish are not aged for extended periods as they are best served as fresh as possible. Salting or lightly brining the fish before cooking helps to firm the proteins and add moisture. But the best way to control fish texture is by avoiding overcooking. Because of the naturally tender characteristics of fish and seafood, many varieties are served in raw preparations including sashimi, sushi, salted, cured, or pickled fish are other international favorites. Rock clams and oysters on half shell are popular too. All of this require the freshest fish of the highest quality and careful handling that includes strict temperature control and high sanitation standards. Fish tended for raw consumption must be frozen to kill any parasites including worms for at least 24 hours below a temperature of negative Fahrenheit or negative 
20 Celsius, after which it is thawed on the refrigerator for at least 12 hours. It is important to point out that the freezing does not kill all harmful microorganisms, as some are killed only when fully cooked. Now you can see here the cooking temperatures, 120 to 130 Fahrenheit or 50 to 55 Celsius is ideal for fish proteins to coagulate and at a lower temperature as mentioned, fats and gelatin in the muscles also melt at a lower point too. Take note, 140 Fahrenheit or 60 Celsius begins the fish protein to be dry and it loses its moisture. Going forward to 160 Fahrenheit to 60 Celsius, the fish will be very dry. Although ideally, the cooking temperature would be 120 to 130 Fahrenheit or 50 to 55 Celsius, there are varieties of fish which are thick skinned that is ideally cooked at higher temperatures of 140 to 160 Fahrenheit or 60 Celsius. Now let's discover cooking techniques for fish and shellfish. Fish is very delicate and easily overcooked. During cooking, tests for doneness must be observed through the following. The fish just separates into flakes. If bones is present, the flesh separate from the bone, and the bone is no longer pink. And then lastly, the flesh becomes opaque, which is usually off-white color. Those three items mentioned will tell the doneness of the cooked fish. Here are some other pointers to take note. For lean fish, Remember that it has no fat or almost no fat, so it easily becomes dry. It's best served with sauces to enhance moistness and gives richness. Poaching is the moist heat method suited. Fish should be basted with butter or oil if broiled or baked. Lean fish, must, lean fish may be fried or sauteed to gain palatability from added fat. Fat fish, on the other hand, enables to tolerate more heat without becoming dry because of their fat content. Fat fish also can be cooked by poaching and is well suited to broiling and baking methods. The dry heat methods eliminate excessive oiliness of the fat fish. Large fish, large fat fish like salmon and mackerel may be cooked in fat, but be careful. It should not be given too much additional oil as it will have excessive greasiness. Shellfish Cook oyster just enough to heat thoroughly to keep it juicy and plump. Clams become tough and rubbery if overcooked. And shrimps, like other shellfish, become tough and rubbery when cooked at high temperature. Now we are Now let us discover some guidelines for baking fish. First, fat fish are best for baking because they are less likely to dry out. Earlier it was mentioned and even before in the previous lesson, fat fish is named because of its distinct quality of having fat content, unlike the other lean fish. Second, lean fish may be baked, but care should be taken not to overcook it. Basting with butter or oil helps prevent drying. The butter and oil will serve as the fat content that is not available in the lean fish. Third, baking temperatures is 350 Fahrenheit to 400 Fahrenheit. And lastly, serve 
baked fish with a sauce or seasoned butter to enhance moistness and improve palatability. Now we have guidelines for broiling or grilling fish. First, overcooking should be avoided in cooking fish. Second, select appropriate fish for broiling or grilling. Not all kinds of fish are ideal for such cooking method. Third, fat fish and thin fish should be coated with fat before broiling to reduce drying. Fourth, lean fish may be dredged in flour before dipping in oil or melted butter. The flour helps form a flavorful brown crust. Fifth, to prevent splitting during cooking, score the skin with a sharp knife. For small fillets, scoring may not be necessary. Scoring is done to make sure that there is an outlet wherein the moisture will come out and will not break down the fish itself. Sixth, broil fish to order and serve immediately. It is highly desirable to have a freshly cooked fresh fish. Seventh, broiled fish may be garnished lightly with paprika if more color is desired. The red color of the paprika will surely enhance the visual appeal of your dish, the smell, as well as, of course, the flavor. And the last one, at number 8, thick cuts should be turned once during broiling in order to cook evenly. Thin pieces may be arranged on an oiled pan and broiled on one side only. Lobster is also broiled without turning. Guidelines for sautéing and pan-frying fish and shellfish First, lean fish are suited to sautéing because of the added fat. It will surely enhance the flavor of this milder flavored fish. Second, fat fish can be sautéed with care so as not to become greasy because as we all know, fat fish has its natural fat content. Third, breading the fish with flour or starchy products forms a crust that browns attractively, enhances flavor, helps hold the fish, and prevent sticking. Fourth, use fat enough to cover the bottom of the pan. This is done also to avoid the sticking of the fish. Fifth, be sure the pan is hot before adding fish. Small items are sautéed over high heat. Larger items require lower heat to cook evenly. Sixth, very large fish may be browned in fat and finished in an oven, uncovered. Seventh, Brown the most attractive side, the presentation side that is. 8. Handle fish carefully during and after cooking to avoid breaking the fish. And lastly at 9. Sauté or fry to order and serve immediately. Again, just like in the previous cooking methods, an immediately cooked fish should be served And we have guidelines now in deep frying. First, lean fish, both whole or small portions, and shellfish like shrimps, clams, and oysters are best for deep frying. Second, fish to be fried is breaded or buttered to prevent sticking from the pan. The batter also provides a crisp, flavorful, and attractive coating. Third, frozen breaded fish can be fried without thawing. Fourth, fried fish is usually served with lemon or cold sauce such as tartar, remoulade, or cocktail sauce on the side. And the last one at fifth, the oil used should be enough to submerge the food item during frying.
Our reference for this video material comes from Ayag Mariel C. Supplementary Learning Material TLE Home Economics Cookery 10 Quarter 3 Module 2 Fish and Shellfish with the subject code TLE underscore HECK10PC dash LLGI dash 16. And that ends our video lesson for today. I hope that you have learned something valuable and meaningful that you can use in your daily life. If you have any questions regarding this topic or would like to learn more about other related topics, please comment it down below. Don't forget to like and share this video with your family and friends. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Surdi. Thank you everyone for watching and have a great day ahead.